Sacco. Oh, yeah. Yeah, perhaps you've noticed over the years the legendary platers in Oregon's music history uh, tend to have one thing in common. His name is John Mazzocco. And it's not a mistake that people like Curtis Salgado and Paul Belay relied on John to hold down the bottom end. It's also not surprising that even the late, great John Lee Hooker sought him out. He spent three years on the road as John Lee's bass player. It was actually John Mazzocco that helped make the connection back in 1988 that led to John Lee Hooker headlining the first ever Waterfront Blues Festival. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to induct John Mazzocco to the Oregon Music Hall of Fame. Thank you, Tony. If I ever jump around like that, somebody shoot me from the audience, would you please? Because I know I'm much cooler looking than that. You guys are wonderful to be here tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. I want to thank Omhoff and the board for the honor. I want to thank my brother Mark, who's over there. Let's give my brother Mark a big round of applause. And my dad. I played my first gig here in Portland when I was eight years old. Uh, with a guy named George Mitchell Spedich. And George is a piano player here in Portland who uh, for the past 35 years has been Diana Ross's keyboard player. And he still lives here and he should get in here. That's my one thing I want to tell you. Okay, I always wanted to be a better bassist, a complete bassist. I always wanted to be a bassist that didn't just play the notes, that took the band somewhere, that sat underneath the soloists, and made it better. That's our job. Our job is to make that foundation so complete and then add a little something to it. Like bring it to another level. So when we get to that third chorus, we don't fall apart, right? We fall in line, right? So that's one of the things I always wanted to do. So, and I would ask all of us that are my age, a certain age here, as you can tell by my age, I had a lot of hair when I was younger, but it's gone now. Um, I would ask all of us here to support the mission here at Amoff. I don't know if you can, uh, I, know, I don't know about you guys, I can't take it with me. I can't take any of this stuff with me. So I'm going to leave some of it to them. Um, I would rather help out the next players and help a kid. I'm full of gratitude. It's amazing. I'm, a, I'm an incredibly grateful to all the people that helped me get here. It wasn't just, you know, there was a lot of guys that went, you know, Jim Pepper, man. Jim Pepper growling at me from on stage this far. He was a huge man. He was like 6'4". And he would be this far from my head, and I'm playing along, and we're doing some jazz tune at the speed of God, and he's going... <clears throat> and, you know, so there was a lot of guys besides me. I feel lucky. I feel grateful. I'm very blessed to have you and all these other people in my life. I love you all. Oh, the werewolf, oh, the werewolf, come stepping along. Michael Hurley. He don't even break the branches where he's been known. Michael Hurley. Born in Pennsylvania, Michael grew up with Jesse Colin Young and was friends with the Holy Modal Rounders. And like the Rounders, decided to put down some roots right here in Oregon. Released his debut album back in 1963. Recorded on the same reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder used to capture Lead Belly's last sessions. And over the last five decades, he's released 32 albums driven by what he terms a compulsion to create. His latest CD, Living Ljubljana, was released just last year. His friends called him good old Doc Snock. So please join us in welcoming Michael Hurley to the Oregon Music Hall of Fame. It all started with my involvement with the Youngbloods. In California, they had that hit record, Get Together. And uh, that impressed Warner Brothers so much that they gave them a subsidy label to do what they wanted to. So uh, they started 
plucking up all their old buddies from, from before they hit the big time, you know. Uh, the first record they, they made of me was, was made in my bedroom in, in Boston. So I did a tour with them. And uh, that's why I got to see Seattle and uh, uh, San Francisco and uh, Portland. After a while, the uh, Holy Motor Rounders moved out to uh, Portland. I guess they were playing in Portland for a long time and they kind of settled down and separated out and stuff. I made uh, trips back to Portland and played music in Portland and uh, I just kept doing that until about 2002 and just decided uh, to move in. Oh, I'm 